praise God. We're going to pray with the praise and worship team. Amen. Amen. Get this party, this Holy Ghost party started.
chapter 10, I'm sorry, and we're talking about God's faithfulness. You don't want to miss it. It's very interactive. We stop. We read every comment. Um, you can join us here at 645 or hop on social media. Then we also have our adult Sunday school every Sunday at 9 o'clock. I'm telling you, it's popping. <laughs> Did I get it right that time? I don't know. Um, so join us at 9 o'clock. You can join us in person in our Sunday school room. It's got a big sectional. Believe me, it's comfortable. Um, and it's great conversation led by the Holy Spirit. And then we have our worship service. Um, what we have going on um, with the other ministries in the church, we have the women's potluck today immediately after church. They were already setting up, so if, if you're already hungry, you can, um, you know, take advantage of the food because the women, in the, you know, the women's group, they know how to break it down, right? 
And then we had um, we had a wonderful men's uh, we have a yes, men's Zoom yes. call every Saturday at not at um, at nine o'clock. And if you want to join, we're we're in the book The Velvet Rage, and we were talking about validation, right? Uh, as gay men. And so if you want to be part of that Zoom call, honestly, it's bomb.com. If you like how I'm going on with these things. <laughs> bomb.com, you want to join us. If you want to be part of it, just see Leo, and Leo could uh, send you the link so you can join. Um, every Sunday, we have, we have a food offering. And so what we do is, um, for those of you who are bringing, for this month, it's vegetables, canned vegetables that we are going to add for the groceries that we pass out on the 20... Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. So, um, in addition to that, we always put the blessing bags here. These blessing bags have socks, toiletries, easy-to-eat canned foods, a poncho. It's got everything that somebody might need that is living on the streets right now. If you don't have groceries to, to drop off at the sanctuary, that's okay. But if you take a couple of these bags, put them in your car so if you see somebody in need, you can hand it to them. Come up and pick one up. So that's kind of what we do at this part of the service. So I'm going to ask that for those of you who do have the groceries to bring to the altar so we can pray for them, bring your food offerings to the Thank you. 
Father. And we're going to pour out our hearts. We're going to give. We ask for thanks and gratitude and blessings for over this food. We're so grateful to those who are able to give, those who thought they needed to give, those who just simply gave a smile, a gesture, a kind posture of their heart. We appreciate them because that goes a long way. That inspires us to keep giving, to keep going. And dear Heavenly Father, we know you make the highest plans and the ransom for us. So it's only fitting that we give back to you because you gave us so graciously. You're the great role model that you are. Thank you for these children in here, these people here, because they're my brothers and sisters in love, and I love them so very, very much. We're going to go out, we're going to show up today, and we're going to give all we can back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why is it all people in the song today? All right, let's go. I invite your church to stand back up. Let us praise the Lord.
morning, we're going to see the King this morning because we're going to see his blessings pour out on us. We're going to see his love pour out on us. We're going to see his mercy and forgiveness pour out on us. We want to sing a new song for you guys this morning. It's called, We're Blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed when we come and when we go. And with that blessings, we have power of the Lord. How many say amen? Amen. That's how I sing. Bless, bless, bless.
thousands of Israel. His enemies will flee. Your enemies will flee. You know, sometimes that enemy is oneself. Sometimes we try to blame the devil. When we're doing, we, when we're doing some messed up stuff ourselves. We believe in a God that is mightier than oneself. We believe in a God that is mightier than the dark thoughts inside of us. We believe in a God that rescues his people when they call out to him. And then the Bible says, and I love remembering this verse, the Bible says that he holds the whole world in the center of his palm. So it doesn't matter what you or I choose to do, our decisions, even if those ones make us fall or make us, make us succeed, you, I, everybody, Vera, Evelyn, Fred, we are all in the center of the palm of the Lord's hand. Only one person believes it. We are all in the center of God's hand. How many can say, Lord, my life is in your hands?
trying to dream with me, getting loud can you hear it echoing? Take my hand, will you share this with me? Cause darling,
That's why you will never, you will rarely see me in like, you will never see me in like a light blue shirt. <laughs> it's always dark. That's why people tell me, all oh, your shirts look the same. That's all your shirts look the same. It's okay. It's okay. Right? I'm uniquely made. Part of the, that's how you made me, right? You made me a sweater. <laughs> Amen. Approach God's throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because of who you are. We thank you because you loved us before we loved you. We thank you because you gave your life for us. And as we get ready, Lord, to dive into your word, Lord, I'm asking that, that your word go out boldly. Lord, that it doesn't come back void. That every word that comes out of my mouth be dripping with your anointing. That every word, Lord Father, minister to this body of believers, Lord Father. And that it, it, is, that it becomes a transforming word, Lord. Because we know that you are calling us what you are calling us to do in this season. So, Lord, we ask that you bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today I want to talk about walking by faith. Because, you see, walking by faith is, um, walking by faith may require, family, that we endure um, difficulty for a certain season in, in our lives, Right? as we're waiting for God to answer our, our prayers, because it's not always about the answer to our prayers. Sometimes it's about preparation. It's about God preparing us so we know what to do when the answer comes. But we have to remain faithful, family, and more times than not, because walking by faith is difficult. More times than not, family, we, um, more times than not, it's, it's, it's difficult to walk by faith because it requires something from us. It requires that we are patient, right? Now, I don't know about you. How many of us like to wait? Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm not always patient, so sometimes my trials tend to last a little longer because there are a few things that God needs to do in my life, right? So sometimes my trials last a little longer. Last week, we saw how David had difficulty waiting on the Lord, right? And even at one point when we were in Psalms 43, we see how David accuses God of rejecting him. But because he stayed in faith and wrestled through his doubt with the Lord, by the end of 43, we see how he gets to a point where he's encouraging himself in the Lord. As we walk by faith, family, we have to trust that God is going to guide those areas in our lives that are out of our control. And to do that sometimes, we have to learn how to encourage ourselves. We can't always depend on other people to encourage us when we're having difficulties in our lives. I know it's nice, but sometimes we have to learn how to encourage ourselves. Listen, there are times when we will, when our faith is going to be tested, the Word of God tells us in John 16, in this world you will have trouble. Our, te our faith will be tested. It doesn't say we have to smile through it, but it does say we have to be encouraged through it. We have to learn how to encourage ourselves through it so we keep moving forward. In fact, family, we may have to walk by faith for an extended period of time. See, if our faith isn't nurtured during those times of trials in our life, we will never grow. That's right. In fact, our faith will grow weak or our faith will fade. So in our text today, we're going to see a woman who didn't let her faith fade. Today we're going to talk about Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel. A woman who faced a difficult season in her life and she was tested for an extended period of time, but she never lost hope. Come on now. See, she knew that she could rely on God, that she could trust God to meet the needs that she had in her life. So she was relentless about approaching God's throne of grace. You see, walking by faith, family, requires patience and it requires persistence. So we can learn, learn a lot from Hannah in our passage today. So why don't we go there? Right? Let's go to our text. Our text today is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 through 20. So let's go to the Word of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when we see the first the first two verses, we see that there was a man named Elkanah. And Elkanah had two wives. And verse 2 says, one of his wives was named Hannah, the other was named uh, Penina. 
And Benita had kids, but Hannah had none. Verse 3 says, year after year, this man went up from his hometown to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli were priests for the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife, Benina, and to the, all her sons and her daughters. But verse 5 says this, it says, but to Hannah, he gave a double portion. He gave a double portion. Why? Because he loved her. You see, his relationship with Hannah was different than his relationship with Penina. So that's maybe why, as, as I read between the lines, maybe why Penina treated Hannah so badly and provoked her so intensely. intently, Right? It says, but to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and she would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Well, apparently not, Elkanah. <laughs> because she's crying and she's not eating. <laughs> Just Verse 9 says, Once they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. And in her deep anguish, Hannah prays to the Lord, right? She goes right to the source. She goes to the giver of life. And she weeps bitterly. Verse 11 says, and she made this vow. She says, Lord Almighty, if you will only look at your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant and give her a son. How many of us have prayed like that with that kind of desperation, weeping and sobbing before the Lord? How many of us have prayed like that? You see, if you haven't prayed like that, then guess what? This may be the season that God grows you into a position where you learn how to trust Him in all circumstances, where you kneel before the Lord and you pray with that kind of okay. intensity or trust. God have mercy on us. And not forget your servant and give her a son. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Now this is interesting because assumptions usually are. Verse 13 says, Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk. He made a judgment without a lot of information. How many times do we do that? Okay. We got to be careful with the things that we say, the things that come out of our mouths, right? Or the things today that we type on in, on social media. Okay. Without knowing all the information, we make assumptions just like Eli did. So he teaches us that it happens to the best of us, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Verse 14 says, Then he said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put your wine away. What? <laughs> Verse 15, she says, Not so, my lord. I'm a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I'm pouring out my soul to the Lord. She was pleading with God like we saw David pleading with God last week. Verse 16 says, do not take your servant for a wicked woman. This is what she tells Eli. I have been praying out here out of my great anguish and grief. So Eli says, my bad. Okay. Yeah. But he says it like this. He says, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you ask of him. And she says this, may you find favor in your eyes. This is the flavor that I get from that passage, that particular verse. It's like on her way out, she says, thank you, brother, but will you keep praying for me? I still have a need, can you keep praying for me? What I love about the interaction between Hannah and Eli is he blesses her on her way out. He doesn't know her situation. But he blesses her anyway. See, family, my mom used to say this in Spanish. Cada cabeza es un mundo, for those of you who speak Spanish, right? In English, it's every head is its own world. See, I don't know what kind of storm you're going through in life. But here's what I do know. 
God requires of me to bless you when I see you. That's right. Yes. And I love it with you because we ought to be encouraged during difficult times. We need sometimes to remember. We need somebody to remind us, right? So that's what I love about the exchange. See, in verse 18, it continues. It says, then she went on her way and she ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. You see what a little encouragement and prayer can do in your life? Verse 19 says, early the next morning, they arose and they worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their home in Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in verse 20, it says, so in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And she named him Samuel and says, because I asked the Lord. Yeah. Because I asked the Lord for him. Yeah. What are you asking God for? What do you need God to do in your life right now? Because I asked the Lord for him. You see, in the opening verses of our text today, we see the extreme difficulty that Hannah had to face. She's teaching us how to remain faithful in the middle of our trials and tribulations. She was married to Elkanah. She was one of two wives. It's probably not so comfortable. <laughs> she was barren, and the second wife had kids. Verse 5 tells us that Hannah wanted to have kid children, but it was she was unable to. It was a situation that was completely out of her control. And I think that a lot of us can empathize with Hannah. We have faced situations that have been out of our control, but there's more to Hannah's story. Hannah had something else to deal with. She was belittled by the other woman in the house. Every year they would go to the house of the Lord and the other woman would provoke her. By the way, provoking is not a fruit of the Spirit. Okay. I'm just saying, sometimes we need a reminder. Yes, Lord. Faith, love, patience, provoking. Yeah, it doesn't even fit. <laughs> it doesn't even fit. The family dynamics created a difficult environment for Hannah. Panina used Hannah's barrenness as a means to ridicule and belittle her. Why? Because hurt people will hurt people. See, when I read between the lines here, I see that Panina was jealous of Hannah's relationship with Elkanah. So she took it out on her, and it made Hannah's situation a little desperate. Not only was she unable to bear children, she had to endure the relentless mockery and ridicule of Panina. You see, family, the enemy will use other people to add to our despair in seasons of difficulty. And we have to be encouraged in times like that. We have to learn how to grow past those situations. Because when we grow past those situations, we understand this. We understand that other people's opinions and embellishments are none of our business. That's what we understand. This is just one of the tactics that the enemy uses to challenge our faith. How many of us have been mocked before? Now I got another question for you. It might make some of us uncomfortable or not. But we gotta keep it real, right? We gotta keep it 100 here at Christ Chapel of Long Beach. Amen, amen, How many amen. of us have been mocked in church before? Yes. Oh, come on, right come. here. Eli. Right? <laughs> See, we can all relate to Hannah, how Hannah was feeling. And like Hannah, we can't let the mocking or the belittlement of others cause us to abandon our faith, cause us to walk away from the work that God has already done in our lives that he started a long time ago. We can't let things like that call us or allow us to walk away from what God is calling us to do. We have to keep moving forward. We cannot stop. There is too much at stake. And we can't let the beginning of other people stop us from doing what God is calling us to do. Here at Christ Chapel of Long Beach, we're going to keep going another 40 years or until the Lord comes. So we can see in our passage today how broken Hannah was because of everything she had to endure. She was broken, she wept, and she wouldn't eat. The ridicule became so intense that it began to affect her health. The burden that she faced daily had gotten to the place where it dominated her life. Hannah's faith was being put to the ultimate test. Come on now, I know that we can, read, we can all relate to Hannah at this moment. Yes. You see, it's in our moments of deep despair that the enemy 
enemy attacks us, so we begin to question God's love and God's faithfulness because he wants us to believe that God doesn't care about our needs and that he would abandon us in the middle of our adversity. But we have to be like Anna family, and we have to possess that same determination that she did. Thankfully, Hannah didn't succumb to her brokenness and despair or give in to her defeat, but instead she rose above in faith. Hallelujah. You see, verse 10 tells us, in deep anguish, she prayed while weeping bitterly. Hannah's situation had not yet been resolved. She remained in deep bitterness of soul, but she refused to give up. We can't let our situations cause us to give up. We have to hang in there. She poured out her heart before the Lord, weeping before him, and she shared her heart's desire. Hannah knew that it was God and God alone that could provide what she needed. And while she didn't enjoy this period of her life, she was exactly where she needed to be. See, I don't know where all of you guys, what you're, each and every one of you guys are going through, but here's what I do know. You're exactly where you need to be. Because sometimes it is in the brokenness where we're willing to surrender to the will of God and we will be open to what God is trying to do in our lives. Stay faithful. Trials and adversity are never enjoyable. But they have the potential, family, of bringing us closer to the Lord. So I pray that we do as Hannah and that we begin to make our requests known to the Lord. We see in verse 11, Hannah makes a vow and says, Lord, if you would look at my affliction and remember me, then I will give my son back to you. If you caught it, family, she has a prophetic word for herself or her own situation. She's asking the Lord for a son, but she's making plans. For his life, she said. When you, in other words, when you give me, when you answer my prayer, I'm going to dedicate that answer back to you. That's right. It's okay. Come on now. In the midst of great despair, Hannah remained committed to the Lord. She desired a child more than anything else in life, and yet she promised that if the Lord would grant this request to her, she would give her son back. She was willing to offer the Lord the one thing that she desired most in life. She would allow her son Eli. She would allow her son to go live with Eli and be of service to the Lord instead of raising him at home with the Lord. Come on, somebody. That's commitment right there. That's what God is asking of us in this season of our church. See, although Hannah had likely dealt with bitterness and jealousy in the past, she had reached a place that she was willing to submit herself to the Lord's desire. Are we willing to submit ourselves to the Lord in this season of our church and our lives? Are we willing to surrender in service to God because that takes faith? See, I pray that the Lord increase our faith and our commitment to Him. As Hannah prayed before the Lord, she caught the attention of Eli, and he watched her, and he saw her mouth moving, but he didn't hear any of the words come out of her mouth, and he assumed that she was drunk. And when he confronted her, she assured him, yes, she did. She said, I'm sorry, sir, I have not been drinking, but I've been pouring my heart out to the Lord. I'm praying, Eli, hello. I feel like maybe you do that to me sometimes. I walk into the bathroom, and Jim is sitting on a little bench that we have in there. And I come in, because I'm loud, because I'm Puerto Rican, that's where Puerto Rican are. And I'm like, hey, baby, they're like, oh, I'm praying. <laughs> okay, I, I, and I have the nerve to get offended. I'm like, well, you could have just told me that. <laughs> I'm praying, Eli. In times of doubt and accusation, we have to remain focused on our needs and be persistent in prayer. Even if no one else understands, the Lord does. Family, I want you to understand, He sees what you're going through. Amen. He knows what you're going through. And He cares about what you're going through. We, I, we don't know exactly how, how long Hannah desired a child, but we do know that she dealt with this burden for many years. Her persistent faith and commitment to the Lord eventually brought her to the result she desired. And she, as she was leaving the house of the Lord, Eli says, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you ask. Following her time of fervent prayer, Hannah's life began to change because that's what prayer will do. I'm almost done. I don't know if you guys are falling asleep. No, no, no. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. Let's get it, you know. <laughs> okay. 
as of yet, Hannah's prayer had not been she had not, had not been answered. She had not conceived. But she now enjoyed peace from the Lord. Eli had offered his blessing and Anna's hope was renewed. We have to be consistent in speaking blessings and peace to each other. Amen. She began to eat again and her continent was now filled with joy instead of sadness. She didn't know how it would happen, but she, her faith was renewed and she knew God was going to answer her prayers. You see, my family is going to have its share of difficulties and trials and the, the Bible doesn't tell us that we're going to be void of any of those things, but it does say that God will never leave us nor forsake us. In the midst of our trials through the Holy Spirit, God is going to bring peace into our lives, even in the middle of a raging storm. If you are burdened today, God is asking you to bring your burdens to Him. And even though you may not find the answer that you need today, what you're going to walk away with is peace. Verse 19 says this. It says, so it says, they rose up early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. Bear in mind at this point she still hadn't conceived yet. She received peace in her heart, but her prayer wasn't answered. Because here's what God does sometimes. God deals with the problem first, right? And so here he was dealing with her stress levels. So he deals with her stress. He deals with her emotional state. And then he works on her body. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever this message is for, God is dealing with all those other things that are standing in the way so that you can be prepared to birth something for the glory of God. Hallelujah! So Hannah, Hannah's situation doesn't hinder her from praising the Lord. And I'm convinced that she was praising God because she knew that he was going to provide for her. That's faith. And she has, she, she has yet to receive her blessing, but she offers praise in advance. Her faith is now strong and it has affected her worship. You see, family, God is worthy of our praise. And he's not worthy of our praise because he answers our prayers. He's worthy of our praise because he is God. And because he is a good God, he answers our prayers. You're determined to wait for God to answer every single one of your prayers. You'll never get to the point of worship. And if you never get to the point of worship, you'll never get to the point of complete peace. Come on, somebody. We've got to praise Him while we're anticipating that blessing. Heartfelt praise changes our outlook and it prepares us for God's blessing. Hannah was faithful to the Lord and the Lord remembered her. And when the time was right, she conceived and she has a son and she names him Samuel because I asked the Lord. Because I asked the Lord. We don't receive, the Bible tells us we don't receive because we don't know how to ask. Maybe because we just don't ask. That's right. Because I asked the Lord is what Hannah says. So I'm going to ask something of you right now. And it's going to take courage. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or to come forward. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I am going to ask you to stand up. If you have a need this morning, I want to pray for you. I want to bless you as you leave the house of the Lord. So that way you begin to eat again. So you feel encouraged again. So you are open and you know that God is working everything out so that it works in your favor. So it comes back. Everything in your life will work out for the good of those who love him. Because you love the Lord and you've been called according to purpose. All we got to do is, what we have to do is really simple. We just got to be open. We just have to be willing to receive what God has for us. That's it. You don't have to do the hard work. The Holy Spirit's going to do that. We just have to sit back and surrender. I'm going to do what Minister Shamiz does during prayer service. I am knowing all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. 
We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for what you're teaching us through the story of Hannah. We thank you, Lord, because we hear you loud and clear. Lord, we approach your throne of grace with every single prayer request right now that is represented as people stand in this church. Lord, I'm asking that you would provide peace. Lord, I'm asking that you would provide comfort. I'm asking that you would encourage every person standing right now. Lord, that as they go through the storms that they have to go through, Lord, that you give them the strength to see this through. Because we know, Lord Father, that there is a blessing in store for each and every one of them. And they're going to name that blessing Samuel. They're ready, Lord. Just like Hannah named Samuel, because I asked the Lord. Lord, they will give that blessing a name and they will rededicate that blessing back to you. Lord, we're asking, Lord, that you provide a special anointing and encouragement today. Lord. Grow us, Lord. Grow us, Lord. But Lord, here's the thing. Even if we don't get our answer now, we're going to praise you anyway. Because you are God. And we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you, Lord, and we thank you for the answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This concludes our service, family. Please know that I love you, and may God continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Let's declare the blessings of the Lord one more time.